Today, as on Christmas Day, we read the beginning of St. John's Gospel. John speaks of God's Word, through whom all things were made, the Word who enlightens all human beings, bestowing the ability to grasp truth. This picks up Old Testament imagery. God is infinitely greater than the whole cosmos, but he is not aloof from it. Rather, he holds all things in being and guides them. To keep these truths together, the Old Testament pictures God as speaking the cosmos into being and into beauty and as stretching forth his word to heal, inspire, and liberate. Likewise, the book of Proverbs personifies God's wisdom as a great lady who is God's child and master craftsman and offers us a banquet of truth. Today's first reading imagines her pitching her tent in Israel because by giving his people the law, God shared with them something of his wisdom. We heard John tell us, the word became flesh and literally pitched his tent among us. 2,000 years ago, God stretched his word into the midst of human history to recreate and redignify fallen humanity to heal and liberate. This is a word of wisdom. Jesus is our new law, the pattern for us to follow. As his gospel unfolds, John shares some details of his time with Jesus. In his prologue, he deploys Old Testament expressions to tell us what he had learned, something even more wondrous than the Old Testament knew. God's word is not simply a poetic expression, a personification. He is a person. The word was in relationship with God. He is from God as the only son from the Father. He does not come from God as creatures do, but is true God from true God, as we proclaim. He does not come after the Father, unlike human children who come into being after their parents do. He is not outside the divine being, as human children grow up, outside their parents. Instead, rather as my ideas are from my mind, yet within my mind, so the Word, the Son, is from God the Father and timelessly abides in the Father's bosom. During his time with Jesus, John learnt about Jesus' relationship with his Father. He also heard Jesus pray that we come to be with him where he is. To all who received him, he gave power to become children of God. We are invited to share Jesus' own sonship, to share his relationship with his Father, to abide forever with him in the Father's bosom. Nothing less than that. A key theme of this season is that God became human so that human beings can become divine, become God the Father's adopted children. John's prologue suggested to the theologians of the early church that the divine word is from God the Father 
rather as my ideas are from my mind, yet within my mind. We may picture God as an artist. An artist conceives an idea of what she will craft, then puts her idea onto canvas or into stone. God conceives beforehand what he will craft, then calls the cosmos into being, though the words beforehand and then don't capture God's eternity. Saint Paul, too, sees Christ as God's wisdom, and in today's epistle says the Father chose us in Christ. In his eternal word, he conceived of us as his work of art, then stretched forth his word to make us his new creation. The artist puts something of herself into her work, but it is not her friend. To her friends, she gives herself in a two-way relationship, sharing not only ideas and plans, but also her idea of herself. Of course, she knows herself only partially. God the Father knows himself fully. He expresses himself without reserve in his eternal word. That is why his word is his perfect image and cannot be less than a co-equal person, his son. We can sum up John's prologue by saying, in Jesus, God speaks to us. In Jesus, God speaks to us. The word become flesh is a word of new creation, expressing God's plan for us and enacting it by sharing with us the grace and truth who filled him, that is the spirit of sonship who crafts us as God's beloved children. The word become flesh is even more he is a word of friendship, for God has shared himself with us, sent us his understanding of his own self. The only son who is in the Father's bosom, he has made him known. God has expressed himself to us as completely as we can take in while still on pilgrimage. He has spoken grace, personal love. He has spoken truth in the sense of loyalty. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.